Hi everyone, I want to talk about social media today, everyone's favorite subject. How can we do social media better? Now the answer I'm going to give you may not be exactly what you were expecting, but here we go. Why am I doing a video on this? Well, I'm going to go through it really quickly. So there was a riot at the Capitol building. Donald Trump's Twitter account was indefinitely suspended. Uh, Parler, which is a website that people were trying to use in place of Twitter because Twitter had been banning, uh, Facebook had been suspending uh, them for things they have said, and they wanted to have a place to be able to speak these things freely, they were running on Amazon Web Services, which is sort of just a way to develop something like this that needs to be, you know, uh, scalable and whatnot. And Amazon had a contract with Parler, but uh, according to Parler, they broke that contract by simply pulling the rug out from under them, cutting the services, and basically shutting down uh, Parler. So that's where we are now, and let's talk a little bit about potentially um, how we got there. Now, social media has been around for a while, and it has become a point of contention that, I mean, when's the last time you heard anyone say, Facebook is awesome, you know? I love Twitter, Twitter's a great thing. And everyone's just saying how bad it is, right? How bad social media is. Yet at the same time, with all that sentiment, pretty consistent, what we end up with is all these people are, are using it, right? So I wanna go into what is with this? Why does everyone hate Twitter, but also use it at the same time? If they hate it, why don't they just drop it, right? So let's talk about this little experience we have when we interact on, on social media. Sometimes we're posting a picture of our cat and it goes quite well, but other times we jump into the political realm of things. And this is where it gets dicey. Now, the reason it gets dicey is not social media's fault, which is what a lot of, of people have been saying. It's social media, it's terrible, it's ruining society. Well. Social media is really just a tool, and what it's really just doing is it's bringing up some societal issues we've had long before the internet. So the biggest one is, and, and you should know this especially if you've been around before the internet, is that we are not good at talking about things like uh, politics or uh, religion. And uh, sometimes when we are upset with one another, we don't react well, and that's the first one I want to get into. So, again, I am not judging uh, Twitter for their, uh, their ban of Donald. I'm not taking a side on that. I'm not going to try to put myself in their shoes. But the thing is, uh, their response to his speech was to uh, suspend him. That had some real-life things alongside it, and that's why I don't want to use that as an example. There have been other examples where someone said an idea that perhaps they came up with themselves, sort of, or at least they feel like they did, and they wanted to present that idea to that community. And when you come up with an idea, in a way, it's kind of like making food for people, that you feel like this is sort of your own creation. and. The response to that, no matter how bad that idea was, being to ostracize that person from that community, that feels incredibly hurtful to that person, that that person is going to react poorly to that. It's going to make them very defensive, first of all. Um, in certain circles, it does this thing where people they put their idea out there, and especially if it's more quickly taken down, they, they do consider it censorship. And I'm not accusing uh, these companies of doing anything wrong or illegal, obviously. It's your club, it's your company, it is your choice at the end of the day who you want in it and who you don't. The issue with not being open to all, which is uh, what's happened here, is this person comes up with this idea 
they are, as they would see it, censored. They are shut down. They are, you know, at least you can agree, silenced at that very point. So they're going to walk away from that. And again, especially in certain circles, they're going to say, well, why did that have to be silenced? I think it's a good idea. This seems like you're hiding something, uh, maybe not just from me, but why is this dangerous? Why can't we discuss this logically? Why can't you, uh, if you don't like my ideas, uh, debunk them logically or, or discuss it logically with me? So that's not always how it goes. And, and sometimes the argument goes on for a while up until that point that it happens, in, in which case it's easier for me to argue that a lot of emotion went into both sides, including the decision to make that ban. The issue is that person walks off and they're hurt. You know, they're upset with, uh, with what happened and they're going to look for a source of comfort. And if they were silenced, they are going to want to find other people that are like-minded to them at that point, that they, they came up with that idea they may consider it part of who they are, and they're going to seek out others who are like them. Where if you had left them in there and either one, just ignored them, or, or B, argued with them and, and just gone back and forth and had some discourse, it would not have ended that way. I, I, that's the point I'm trying to make here is that that, that ban hammer, that you know, suspension, that actually leaves that person in a worse place than it would have had you had that discussion, although it may have gotten more heated that way. So one thing I really want to go into is, is why is this a problem in our society? Because I think this is something that, you know, we think social media is the bad thing. And my argument here is that social media is just exposing a problem we have in our society and we can use that tool to remedy that issue or at least to make it uh, better. So here's where I'm coming from. A difference of opinion generally with or without the internet doesn't do things like this. It doesn't make us want to silence people. It doesn't break friendships. Um, why why does it do that with things like politics and religion? You know, the things you don't discuss at work. And there are, I, I think, basically two sides to why that, why that happens. Let's, let's consider uh, the first analogy here. If I am a huge fan of pizza with pineapple on it, I just love it. And I tell someone else, hey, you should try this. It's great. And they say, no, I don't want to try it then um, I might be like, okay, or you really should leave them at that. Something, you know, I'm not going to get super upset and try to browbeat them into it. Most people wouldn't. Now, um, what if they did try it and they say, it's mushy. I don't like the texture. Your idea is bad. I do not like pineapple with pizza. Am I going to like get upset and double down and fight with them over that? Probably not. For some reason, I'm just going to accept that they have a difference of opinion and I'm going to move on. So why is it different with politics? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, that doesn't really affect the real world, but it actually sort of does. I mean, if everybody has the same response and I'm the only person out there that likes a uh, pizza with pineapple on it, then I may not be able to get my pizza with pineapple on it. The pizza places aren't going to have pineapples anymore. Nobody likes it. So why am I not like motivated to push this person to like it? Well, it's because they are not really motivated to, you know, it's not a zero sum game, if that makes any sense. They really have nothing to gain by diminishing my access to uh, pizza with pineapple on it. So there is a real world effect, but we're not really fighting a war here. So let's take another example on the other side. So what if I'm playing a game of tennis with someone, right? And, you know, there's a thing called sportsmanship in things like tennis where we are actually, you know, me playing well 
means that the other person is less likely to win. So we, how come we can still complement each other? Why does that work out? Well, it's because the game of tennis doesn't really affect our real life at all. You know, whatever happens in that game, unless you're a professional tennis player, isn't really going to bleed through to our day-to-day -day life. The problems with things like politics is that it has both of those. We are opposed. You know, we have ideas that are, you know, one against the other. Uh, it, it is a, a zero-sum game in a way, although it doesn't have to be. But we may perceive it like that. And there are definitely certain points at which it will be zero sum, that we believe the opposite thing should be done. At the same time, our perception is that there's actually a real effect on the world. And that this is the way that we are going to make decisions on how things are governed, you know, in, in you know, either the country or the world in general. So this is what makes it so uh, difficult to have these conversations, and this is why when you go to Thanksgiving, you've likely been told before, don't bring up politics and don't bring up religion. So that's kind of a, you know, a patch. Just don't bring it up. Let's not discuss it. I think what's happening with social media is it's making it to where there is a way you can do that without consequence. And what I mean by that is uh, this is where bias comes in. So if you are part of a group that is part of your well-being, you are likely to favor some, you know, some side of, of something. So, you know, for instance, if you are a farmer and you work with other farmers, you are going to have certain opinions that, you know, about the world and how things should work that, you know, go along with farmers being able to continue farming and, and doing well doing it, maybe even doing great doing it. Those might be different than somebody in Silicon Valley working for a tech company. Their ideas of what makes someone working at that tech company uh, be able to have a good life and people in the city together being able to have a good life, those may not match up. Now here's the thing, that's not only influenced by the groups that we uh, necessarily have to be around. It's also uh, by our own experiences, where we grew up, who we are, you know, what we identify with, things that we mostly can't control. And so we're almost set into this chess match uh, with preconceived notions, but the determination to win. And there are a few things I can pull out from under this to make it easier for you to deal with social media and to have a good time using it. So number one, uh, the argument that you're having on social media with someone, it is not going to make any difference in the way legislation is done in the United States or whatever country you reside in. Another thing I can give you is that other person is not trying to hurt you. They are not really your enemy and they really think they have an idea that would be good for everyone. Uh, number three is, um, you know, don't take it personally. It's not about you. Uh, the argument that you're making, as you probably like to think it, is not about you, it's about the argument. But you did create the argument. The reason it's not being accepted by this person may not be because it's bad. It may be because they have different needs than you do. They have different priorities than you do, and they've had different experiences than you. And your conversation should perhaps be more based around that than it is who's right and who's wrong. So if you can approach arguments on social media like this, it will work a lot better for you. You can also just Post pictures of your cats because, you know, I really like that too. But, you know, it doesn't all have to be about politics. But, you know, if it is, another thing that's good is the ability to simply walk away. Um, I, I try not to engage in these discussions too much, but I love to read them. And uh, when I do engage, if, if I sense, I, which I know is difficult on the internet, but if I start to see a little bit of defensiveness if I feel like this person is seeing me as hostile in this conversation, 
I tend to just not reply and walk away. I'll let them make their point and I just will not respond. And realize you have that opportunity. And you know, it will probably work out better for you. Another thing is realize that just because you know you seem like you're not convincing anything of it, anyone of anything and you're just everyone just argues and argues and never changes their mind well that may not be true that just because somebody doesn't come back and tell you oh you were right you were right all along that doesn't mean they didn't take you know something you had to say to heart or or it maybe even changed their opinion uh, there's a, a woman out there, Megan Phelps Roper. She used to be part of the Westboro Baptist Church. And she was, you know, slowly uh, yet surely convinced by people on Twitter that her, um, her ideas were wrong and that she eventually left that church. And she's very thankful for the people on Twitter for having the patience to argue with her. Now, I'm going to go back to banning here that what if Twitter had simply just banned her? she'd probably be in that church today. So going back to why you shouldn't ban people, it's because you lose the ability to reach them, which is what I fear we've done today. That because of the actions taken in this instance, you know, we've cut that rope, we've burned that bridge, uh, there's no going back. That now people are not going to have trust in these major platforms they're going to go over to their own, the people that don't agree with how they've been treated. The people that do, they're gonna stay there. So you've taken our, our island of connection, the internet, and now we're splitting it into small islands where we don't hear each other and we have no opportunity to have discourse with one another. We never get to plant those seeds that might grow into trees that we'll never see when we make an argument and someone thinks about it and they start to consider some of it and probably never tell us. This is not great for the future, but if you take some of my points, some of my earlier points about how to use social media, the biggest point I can make out of all of it, don't take it too seriously. You know, it's, it's not gonna matter. Everything that you say, every argument that you have, it's never going to get sent to Congress. It really isn't. If you are proven completely wrong, doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It's not like, you know, the Speaker of the House is going to go look up your Twitter post and see how you got owned by that other person of the opposite ideology, change their mind, and then go re-legislate things against you or against the way that you think. It's, it's not going to happen. All these conversations they are good for thinking about yourself and they are good for teaching you to think about other people and how they work. And if you can look at it that way, you'll be a lot better off. So I hope this video was somewhat helpful. Hey, if you like it, give me a like. If you don't like it, feel free to give me a dislike, but I really do appreciate it if you tell me why you didn't like it. And on this particular subject, if you have any thoughts to add or anything I missed or anything you think I'm wrong about, please put a comment down below because I've been thinking about this for a while and uh, it, it helps me to hear more stuff on it. And subscribe if you like this channel. Have a good night.